Welcome back to the Morning Drive, where we are combining the great praise and worship of WLGS with the reading and teaching of God's Word each Monday through Friday from 5 to 9.30 a.m. I'm Pastor John Pinnell, your host here on this portion of the Morning Drive, and I'm so blessed to be with you. It's time for our devotional, and today we're looking at Exodus chapter 16. I titled this devotional, What is it? And we'll learn about that title toward the end of the devotional. So the Bible tells us, Exodus 16, verses 1 and 2, And they journeyed from Elim, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they departed from the land of Egypt. Then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. So about a month and a half after departing from Egypt, the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, an interesting name considering that Israel had already complained and murmured and they're doing it again, complaining and murmuring against Moses and Aaron. They stated that they would rather die by the hand of the Lord in Egypt than to where they ate meat and bread to the full than to be killed by hunger there in the wilderness. And so the Lord responded by telling Moses, behold, verses four and five, I will rain bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. So upon hearing the complaint, God informs Moses, I'm going to do this wonderful thing for you and the children of Israel. I'm going to rain bread from heaven. And Israel was to go out. They were to gather this bread daily. But on the sixth day, they were to gather twice as much as they would have a supply for the seventh day, which was to be a day of rest. And moreover, that night, God was going to satisfy Israel's lust for meat. And in the morning, he would begin their daily provision of bread. God told Moses that he would use the bread to test the people, whether they would walk in his laws or not. And so that night, verse 13, the quails came up that evening and covered the camp. And in the morning, the dew laid all around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was small, round substance, as fine as frost on the ground, verse 15. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they had not known what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. So that evening quail covered the camp, and in the morning, as the dew burned off, there on the desert floor was this mysterious wafer that covered the ground, and God tested Israel by their willingness to gather their daily provision in the quantity that he had required and not to let any of it remain until morning. Yet some people were not obedient. They gathered more than they needed. And the next morning, the extra bread, bread worms, it stank. And moreover, they were to prepare a double portion on the sixth day that they could have a Sabbath rest on the seventh day. And yet some people attempted to go out and to gather bread on the seventh day. This bread that was called manna. And so the people were tested by God, and many of the people were disobedient to the command of God. 32 through 34 says, Then Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded. Fill an omer with it to keep it for your generations, that you may see the bread of which I fed you in the wilderness. And then they were all to also to take an omer, a jar, and to put manna in it that would be put up in the Ark of the Covenant to be before the Lord. Uh, this is wonderful. Basically, they were, what we might say, go out and take a ball jar, fill it with the manna. You get to keep it in your house, 
And you can show your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, as long as they could keep the jar, I believe that the manna would stay good in that jar because God allowed it to be so. And it was also to be kept before the testimony of the Lord. There in the Ark of the Covenant were the Ten Commandments and eventually Aaron's rod that budded. There was also a jar of manna to be kept there for future generations to see how God provided for 40 years the bread of heaven until Israel came into the promised land. So the Hebrew word manna, it means, what is it? Uh, Strong's Concordance, he says it means whatness. But we find this mysterious bread, Jesus gives a de definition of it himself in John 6, 35. He said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. So Jesus, the bread of life, just as Moses um, fed the children of Israel, well, God, we know, did it. Jesus becomes that bread that we may know life. Well, the manna first came to Israel while they were dwelling in the wilderness of sin, and Jesus came and dwelt among us in our wilderness of sin, and he gave his life as a ransom for our sin. The Israelites were to gather the manna daily before the sun grew hot. And I believe it's a good day, good thing each day to start in prayer and devotion to God. God's word teaches us about Jesus and how we ought to live for him. Each one was to gather the manna according to their need. And we are each responsible to seek the Lord for our salvation. I might also say that... Um, there are some people in, in the faith, they'll just dig into the Word of God deeper than others, but it doesn't mean one is greater in their faith than others. It just means according to their need. God has wired some of us differently. But as long as we are feeding upon the manna, that's what's important. When measured out according to God's standard, they were satisfied. Jesus always satisfies those who put their trust in him. On the seventh day, they were to rest from gathering the manna, to spend the day with family, to do good, to worship God. And we should do the same on our Sabbath. We might call it Sundays now. But to spend the day with the Lord, with our family, doing good, walking in fellowship with God. And eating manna kept Israel alive for 40 years. Partaking of Jesus keeps us alive, well, forever. Jesus said in John 6, 48, 49 and 50. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread that comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the bread of life. And may it be that we would be obedient to partake of you through faith that we might know life and life eternal. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.